there is a big chance that you've never heard of the Sigma SD Quattro. And neither had I until about 3 months ago when I first got into the Sigma game with my $28 find, the Sigma DP1. For someone like me that shoots a lot of film, especially medium format film, that are used to sometimes taking it a bit easy and slow down, and that has used for example the Sigma DP1 and DP2 prior, for us this is a very fast and high tech camera within its genre. But most of you would not and should not agree. If you are after fast autofocus, high ISO or is more of a 1 to 20 keeper ratio kind of shooter, then you must take my review with some afterthought. I can recommend a review made by Damien Brown, he has a channel that I enjoy very much and his review on the SD Quattro is not made like mine, with foveon glasses and an analog film hat. He will give you the bitter truth and I will serve it bittersweet. Back to the review at hand. This APS-C sized foveon censored camera hasn't been out for a year yet, but still is very affordable on the used market if you can find one, that is. I paid 50% of the retail price for an absolute mint condition sample including warranty, some accessories and the Sigma 30mm f1.4 prime lens. In American price terms that would be the equivalent of around 500 bucks since the combo is just short of a thousand dollars brand new. By the way, there is an APS-H version as well. The price isn't too much compared to anything as modern and robust, and robust it is. It feels like cast iron. Hefty is an understatement. And that goes for everything on the camera, it's all very solid. Little things like the battery door feels bomb proof with a sturdy locking mechanism. Buttons and dials feel the same way. And it's of course weather sealed. The grip is really comfortable, definitely on the top 3 together with the NX1 and 5D, but the dials aren't exactly easy to get to from the grip. But given how at least I use this camera, it doesn't really matter. The EVF is big and bright, but does not have a high resolution. I still like it and don't find any real issues using it, but it definitely could be better. Its viewfinder gets absolutely killed by something like the X100F. The display is nice and bright. And check this out. Pretty nifty if you want to use the EVF only to preserve battery. To my eyes it looks like plenty of room for an extra SD slot. A shame it doesn't have one. Especially considering that the RAW files when shooting DNGs, like I do, are about 112 megabytes each. Speaking of which, the camera shoots DNG and Sigma's own RAW files, that from the latest Sigma models needs to be worked on in Sigma's own free, decent but kinda annoying editor. Whereas for example my old DP1 and DP2's files work in Lightroom. DNGs, as you probably know, works in any RAW editor. Some will argue that there's a loss in quality when using DNGs, but I haven't been able to reproduce the issue and if it's there, it's too small for me to care. Because I really like the images that I get from this 39 megapixel equivalent sensor. The mount is Sigma's own, it has a rather long flange distance and for mirrorless it's crazy long. But it's not just air in there, it houses an easy to remove IR cut filter. In other words, if you want to do IR photography, this might be a very interesting camera. For me the filter just acts as a dust protector. All the lenses Sigma makes comes in the Sigma mount as well, including the 18-35 to etc. And they do sell an electronic adapter for Sony, so the lenses can have a broader use. And luckily the mount is just short enough to accommodate M42, which opens up a large world of affordable and fun vintage glass.
The speed of the camera is like I said very fast compared to the old DP1 and many old film cameras, not so much compared to something modern like the Fuji, which of course also costs a lot more. And just like earlier Foveon cameras, the ISO is still best kept at 100 or so, like a roll of Acros or Ektar film. Now I've used the SD for street shooting and some sports and such. It's not great, but if that's what you got, you can certainly use it. And it totally saved me at work one day when we had a Nikon DSLR fail just as we were about to shoot some portraits that we were gonna print in one to one. I popped on this old film camera flash and the image quality definitely held up for such a large print. But what I mostly use it for is the sort of images I would take with my medium format film cameras. A bit more planned shooting, still life and landscapes. Last summer I visited this flea market and happened to have a film camera with me. This summer we went there again and I brought the SD. Now I'm not saying that its images look just like film, but it's the shooting style that reminds me of film. The hunt for tonality and colors. Some cameras make you look for motion, some for dark shadows. This one makes me very aware of colors. It's like if you bought a Phantom Super Slow Motion camera, it would probably make you more observant of things moving fast. Or how a macro lens makes you all of a sudden interested in bugs and other tiny things. There really isn't any need for heavy processing to make the colors out of this camera pop. I think that's it, I like the camera for what it is, but I don't hate it for what it isn't. I simply choose to accept it with both its strengths and limitations. And by the way, if you were waiting on the video quality, there is none. This is stills camera only. Check out my other videos and follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye!